the title here is the uh, common servers type and threats. <coughs> so let's look at the four words. In a broad sense, um, what is a server? A server is a computer system that provides services to other machines over a network. Okay, that means a server serve other people, serve other machines over the network. And so this is from a, the broad perspective, and this is from a more specific point of view. A server is a high performance computer that provides business services to external computers through a network. So therefore, a server requires high uh, stability, security, and performance than a normal common PC. Okay. Right. So, what's the objective of this training? Um, so, first of all, we are going to learn uh, the categories of servers. We will learn the functions of some of the common servers. We also will look at the security threats of a common servers. Uh, and uh, and what about vulnerabilities and also the uh, patches? Okay, so all these are actually related to a server uh, kind of scenario. All right, so the contents, server overview. We will talk about the common server software, server security threats, and also the vulnerabilities and the patches. All right, so what is a server? Okay, this is a definition. Okay, a server is a high-performance uh, computer that provides uh, services, including query, storage, and computing, to the clients over a network. A server mainly provides services such as web application uh, for file downloads or probably uploads, uh, database storage, and probably also for printing. So these are actually uh, some of the very common uh, functionality of a server. Okay. Right. So let's look at the features of a server. Um, so a server typically will have a higher availability. Okay. So which means uh, some of the components are actually redundant. Um, so uh, example, right? So if you look at the server, uh, uh, this this is this is a very typical a two U size of server, two U height, and here we have the two power supplies. Okay, so if you look at the power supplies here, just in case the one power supply failed, yeah, you still have a second one at the bottom. Okay, example, and uh, server also have uh, some of other components which is redundancy, such as the uh, fans. Okay, so if you look at this example, we have four fans over here, and also uh, at the front we have the uh, hard drive. Okay, so pro most of most likely uh, some of the models that we have, uh, we do have some models that has uh, eight hard drive. Okay, and uh, maybe some models or even have the uh, twenty-five pieces of hard disk or maybe twelve pieces of hard disk. Okay, so all these hard disks uh, we can actually configure the. Uh, for example, rate you know rate five or maybe rate six, just in case if one of the one of the hard disks fail, all right? So uh, we we don't fail everything. Okay, there's there's a a kind of a redundancy for them. Okay, so these are actually some of the examples. Uh, the feature of the server as as compared with a PC, um, nothing much about the redundancy in PC uh, except you probably can have uh, maybe two hard drive. Uh, configure them as uh, mirroring okay just some example um, usability yeah so server is actually can be used for so many so many purposes okay it can be a web server it can be a file server it can be active directory servers etc etc scalability uh, servers can be upgrade All right so if you look at uh, some of the server uh, so if you look at these two uh, silver uh, color thing and these are actually two processors. Okay, these are actually the heatsink, and below the heatsink is actually the uh, processor. So, some some companies they might want to start with single processor, then later they upgrade to uh, this can scale to a dual processor. And for in terms of memory, you probably can start with like maybe 16 gigabyte of memory, then eventually you can upgrade up to like 256 gigabytes. So scalable. Okay. Uh, and also manageability. Okay, this is the best part. 
Um, so typically for Huawei server, we have this uh, port, the management port, which is just like any other uh, brand of a uh, server. Like HP, they have something called the uh, HP ILO. Dell have something called the uh, iDrag. Okay, so for Huawei, we have something here called the iBMC. Okay, so this is actually the port for us to connect and to manage the server. We can even power up and we can even shut down the server remotely. And we can also check the status remotely. Okay, without going, without need to visit the uh, server physically. Okay, so these are some of the feature. Right next, we talk about <laughs> server versus PC. Okay, um, so typically a server in terms of a, a processor performance, uh, server has a multiple processor. Okay, so the previous example that I show you was a uh, two processor type of uh, server, and uh, for Huawei we even have four processor servers, we have eight processor servers, we even have up to 16 or even 32 processor of server, okay? Uh, for PC, um, typically you don't find a lot of processor, okay? Maybe one or maybe for a higher end a PC or what we call it the workstation, you most likely will have probably two processor. Um, availability, high, and PC as I mentioned, low, not much of the redundancy component, uh, usability very high uh, and uh, us usually the server can run like 24 by 7 uh, as opposed to a PC uh, we, we just power up as and when we need it uh, scalability we just mentioned uh, before um, and PC again very limited uh, space that we can scale uh, and also manage manageability uh, for a server we can manage pretty much everything even including power up power down we can even perform a remote installation. Uh, we don't even need a, 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 a CD-ROM to be attached to the server, or maybe we don't even need a keyboard, mouse, and a, and a monitor. Uh, we can perform everything through remote. But PC um, is very hard, very limited uh, functionality. All right, so in terms of a classification um, server, we have an uh, entry-level server. We have a work group kind of server, depart departmental type of server, and also we have the enterprise level server. Okay, so this is probably will be the uh, one processor server. This probably will be the two processor server, and this is probably two to four processor kind of server. And enterprise level probably from anywhere from four to eight processor servers. Um, the system architecture typically are the uh, x86. So when we call when we mention x86 is we typically refers to Intel uh, processor or maybe the uh, uh, AMD type of uh, server processor. The non x86 will probably will be uh, something like uh, let's say from uh, Oracle. Uh, there's a processor called Spark, okay, S P A R C, Spark processor, which is a non Intel type of processor. From HP, they have also something called the uh, P A R I S, okay, P A R I S processor. And uh, for IBM, they have something called the uh, power processor. Okay, so these are called the uh, non x86 type of a processor. Okay, and all these are also called servers. Uh, by appearance, now later we look at the uh, by appearance. Uh, we have rack servers, blade servers, tower type servers, cabinet servers, uh, and also by usage. Yeah, general purpose servers, and also sometimes uh, function servers. Right, so let's look at the uh, by the by the appearance. So the first one is called the uh, rack servers. Okay, so as the word suggests here, rack server. Uh, this type of server is actually designed with a, a, a fixed um, a measurement, and uh, so here on the width uh, is typically uh, 19 inches of the uh, width. Okay, this is actually a, a standard size that can fit into pretty much any types of uh, rack, the server rack, any brand, any vendor, okay? And uh, typically here, uh, the height of the server, yeah, the measurement is actually 1U, okay? Or maybe for some of the server, we have 2U, the height, 2U, okay? And also in this in this example is the uh, 4U, 4U type of servers. And uh, again, some servers may even as big as 8U, 10U, or maybe, uh, Six, uh, 12, 12 view example. Okay, uh, these are the most popular server, best selling, small chassis, and uh, multiple server can be installed into one cabinet. Okay, so just imagine this. 
uh, this is a 1U type of server and a typical cabinet the height of the cabinet uh, standard cabinet is about 42U so 42U if you minus off the, the 2U uh, the first 2U for the switches right then we have like uh, 40 slots uh, more so we can fit in like 40 servers into one cabinet okay right so the second type is called the tower server now tower server as the word suggests here it looks like tower okay it looks like a tower and this is the most traditional server type and uh, and you can see that this this type of server uh, the appearance it looks almost like a PC <laughs> almost like a PC yes in fact uh, yeah it was uh, actually started as a, as a PC casing and after that they they actually put in uh, even a higher processor uh, and uh, and more uh, and all the redundancy stuff and, and make it become a server okay um, and uh, it has a large chassis uh, dimension okay the, 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 the chassis size is actually quite large and there's no fixed size there's no fixed width or maybe the height the height of this guy there's no fix okay some of the servers can be maybe like half of the size here we call it the mini server some is a full tower server and etc etc uh, they have a strong internal scalability again uh, it's as good as other server that you can scale uh, to maybe two processor you can scale up to maybe 256 uh, gig of memory uh, and also but unfortunately it actually takes up quite a lot of uh, large area space again okay? but the good thing about tower server is that uh, for a customer point of view you don't need to invest in the uh, uh, in the cabinet the next is called the blade servers now the blade servers um, so this is a very typical example of uh, Huawei's blade server so we do have a, a blade server uh, we call it the uh, sorry we call it the E9000 series okay and E9000 series is actually the chassis this is the chassis the whole chassis is uh, it take up uh, it, it took up 12 u of the height okay and within the chass the chassis here you can fit in either like we call it the uh, half width half width uh, note half width note so if we fit in half width note we can have up to 16 right and uh, there's also another type of note is called the full width the full width notes if you want to fill up you want to fill up everything here you can fill up maximum eight unit of the full width okay now this is a very typical type of a uh, uh, blade server now um, now here we are discussing about the types okay so it's not particularly to uh, uh, to only to Huawei um, so yeah, just imagine now when we say node all this node basically means they are a server they are the server okay um, so just to give you one example um, one node so how many processor can we fit in um, it typically two processor so two processor now you can actually do the math if it's two processor multiplied by 16 nodes so therefore we can have up to 32 processor per 12 u height okay this is the this is the example okay and uh, this is as so um, the good thing about blade server is that uh, we call it high density servers why because we can fit in so many into a, a, a small footprint a 12 u footprint we can fit in uh, 32, 32 processor okay now if you if if this is given to a normal one new server uh, the most you, you probably can have up to only 24 processor if, if one new server takes up uh, it can can fit in two processor that means a 12 u of the one new node you can have up to 24 okay uh, energy uh, ef efficiency uh, energy efficiency basically means uh, behind the uh, chassis you don't need 16 power supplies okay not like ordinary um, the uh, one new server you will okay so for one new server you probably will need two power supplies per one new so you can imagine that um, so if it's t 12 u space you will probably need 24 pieces of power supply unit okay and uh, so for this uh, e9000 all right so you can actually fit in uh, maybe like anywhere from four to maybe eight uh, of power supply okay uh, centralized management yep so um, instead of uh, every server nodes they have their own management port remember we just spoke about the management port like the ILO like the uh, uh, Dell drag so Huawei we have something called the IBMC all right so again instead of 16 
uh, different IP address for you to manage so now you can have uh, one IP address to connect and to manage and of course a uh, quick deployment okay how quick is quick <laughs> because first of all there's only one chassis so all you need to do is to um, to actually fit in the uh, the railing kit uh, to, to mount the chassis then after that all this blade is just like you know slotted in okay very simple so very quick deployment compared to the traditional uh, rack service right the next type is called the cabinet service okay now why they use the word cabinet now cabinet is for high-end enterprise servers with a complex internal structure that includes a large number of devices with a cabinet server many different devices uh, device units or several servers may be placed in the same cabinet okay uh, so for Huawei we do have uh, some models here uh, which is under the X series uh, of a server we have X6000 series uh, servers we have X6800 uh, series and we also have the X8000 uh, series servers so all these servers are actually designed uh, by cabinet uh, you know when, when the customer wants to order uh, you usually they will order by cabinet how many cabinets that you want to to have okay so this kind of servers are actually typically used for large data center uh, example people like uh, Google maybe Facebook okay or maybe Yahoo where you have they have like thousands and thousands of uh, server within the data center right so this is actually a good uh, type of servers so cabinet servers we call it alright so next we look at the um, common server software okay um, so earlier we spoke about the from physical appearance so now we talk about the um, uh, from the uh, software perspective okay um, so a part of the operating system that we, do, we didn't discuss but typically um, customer will want to install like Windows um, servers addition like 2012 or maybe 2016 and uh, also user like to install uh, Linux uh, as the operating system as, as a server choice right and if you're running on the HP servers you will run uh, the uh, maybe HP Unix and if you're running IBM server you probably will be running uh, IBM AIX and uh, if you're running a uh, Oracle uh, 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 Sun series servers you you probably will run the uh, Solaris operating system okay so a part of the operating system then we talk about the uh, the software okay um, so normally the server framework are like this is either we have a client server uh, framework or maybe a browser server framework um, so so server can be a file server yeah file server means you share the files uh, uh, is, uh, that means a user will centrally uh, store the files in one location and then the um, uh, and people want to connect uh, to, 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 to perform a file sharing they will connect to file server and do the file sharing um, database server is the is a server that uh, that contains the databases right and uh, it's for uh, for the transaction to record all the transaction and things like that um, mail server yep as, as the word suggests mail is to store the email uh, for the you know sending out and also the in receive incoming email yeah, the mail server uh, web server okay I think everyone knows web server so if the company wants to set up your own uh, website right? or maybe any application server that require the your web server maybe like HR system or maybe some CRM system then you can actually install uh, a web server within your organization and FTP this is good for uh, file sharing or maybe we call it the anonymous file sharing uh, maybe your company is providing um, some sort of um, um, hardware for the uh, for your customer and uh, and you want them to uh, constantly uh, up update the uh, firmware or something like that so you probably want to uh, create an FTP server for them to download some software or maybe uh, some uh, firmware update example okay um, DNS server yeah the main role of DNS is to help um, the uh, uh, to provide the name resolution so if, if somebody asks you like what is the the, the IP address of www.yahoo.com or maybe www.google.com so DNS server will respond them with the 
IP address, okay, so DNS and uh, NTP. So NTP is time synchronization server. So that means you are the the central point where every machine point to you using an NTP protocol that point to you to synchronize the time. So everyone will have eventually will have the the same time uh, with the with the uh, NTP server. Okay, and uh, we also have something called the uh, proxy server. Now the proxy word is actually uh, is, is a neutral word for middleman. Uh, but if you if you add on this into web proxy, if you add a word called web, so it become a web proxy server. And uh, I, I think uh, the last few days we actually did discuss about web ser uh, proxy, right? So every traffic, uh, every web traffic, we have to go through the proxy, and the proxy will have to scan your files, your uh, anything that you download, HTML, JPEG, EXE files, and the proxy will perform scanning before they pass uh, the, uh, the the clean copy to the user. Right. So next, <laughs> file server. Okay, we just mentioned file server. Um, a file server is a computer that provides file sharing services to clients. It may be a general purpose server that can run other application. Right, so it, it means uh, the same file server can also run other applications, for example, Active Directory, okay? Or maybe you can run uh, DHCP with uh, DHCP server together with the uh, file server. Um, or maybe it can be just a, a, a server that only provides file sharing service, okay? So this is file server. Next, database server, okay? One or more computers and database management system software running on the LAN form a database server that provides services for customer application. So typically database server will not run uh, standalone. Okay, so database server the main function is to keep the uh, the records, okay, the transaction records. So we typically will have another component which the uh, application it could be it could be a web application it could be uh, ERP application, it could be a HR software application, it could be accounting application that needs the uh, database server a as a backend. Okay, so um, these services include query, updates, transaction management, index, high speed catch, query optimization, security, and multi user access control. Okay, so this is the definition of database server. Next, mail server. Okay. <laughs> so mail server is a device used to manage the sending and receiving of email. It is more secure and efficient than free email services on internet. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I know maybe you guys uh, will, will want to argue about that, you know. Uh, making it a must-have for enterprise. Okay, so any enterprise cannot survive, cannot live without email. Okay, regardless you are using the outside free email or maybe you 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 want to host your own email server in the in the enterprise in the premises, email is a must because every transaction you want to send an invoice to your customer, you want to correspond with your customers, you want to send quotation whatever some any uh, black and white legal documents everything depend on the email and email can be also be a very good uh, uh, kind of uh, evidence you know um, so mail server works in the client server client server mode okay so client server mode basically means um, for example uh, this is a PC or laptop and uh, typically nowadays uh, we can find um, you know, people install uh, Outlook yeah, Outlook uh, as the uh, client software, and then uh, you compose something in the uh, Outlook, and then you click the send button. So once you click the send button, and uh, you actually will connect um, TCP connection to uh, sending server. Typically, the is uh, we call it the port 25. SN so the protocol used here will be the SMTP. So once your server, the sending server within your company, or maybe it could be hosted hosted outside and they will actually send this email based on the destination domain that you mentioned in your sent header right your your destination recipient sorry we call it the recipient's header so and this connection again is also a port 25 connection okay smtp sorry smtp uh, smtp port 25 and then if uh, at at the receiving agent 
right so if you want to read something from the uh, email server typically the, the agent here will use Outlook and then connect here is the using a pop pre uh, protocol which is users uh, port 110 or maybe they use uh, IMAP okay IMAP IMAP 4 that uses uh, port number 143 okay yeah so to receive the email so this is a, a very typical very traditional email uh, transaction um, next FTP server now, FTP server is a computer that provides a file transfer uh, and access services on the network or maybe internet okay maybe with internet as well um, so FTP is the function uh, transfer and manage files okay provides user uh, identities and of a different level uh, you can have a, a, a normal user to log into FTP server then you have a read write access for example okay uh, guess okay uh, so guess maybe I will give you read only access to some of uh, my folder and then we also have uh, anonymous anonymous means nobody you can actually log in without any credential you don't even need to type in your username password um, and the good thing is that they, it, it will records all the commands and also the the files that you you transfer in or transfer out, you know, and uh, changes the root directory of a user. Okay, so this is actually a, a very good function. Uh, change directory of the user basically means so. Uh, let's say I have a folder here, I have subfolder here, and maybe I have another subfolder, and this subfolder is actually my change root folder. Uh, I changed I change this root. Uh, for maybe user one, okay. So that means I'm actually authorized user one. This is your root folder, okay. So root folder means once the user uh, access through FTP to here, this user cannot go up to another folder, or you don't even think about going up, up, up level. Because if the user can go up to a different level, they can actually go into some other subfolder, and probably they can uh, look at other people's files okay which is not permitted so this is actually something where FTP is, is pretty good about uh, where we can uh, control all this DNS okay so we just mentioned about DNS uh, DNS uh, server consists of DNS resolver and also the DNS server um, a DNS server is a computer that stores domain name and also the IP addresses of all hosts throughout the network and can convert a domain name into corresponding IP address okay so DNS I think all of us know uh, typically when we type in uh, www something something dot com on the web browser or maybe when you do a ping test you, you, you do a ping www.xxx dot com and then after that this query will then be forwarded to a DNS server based on the client DNS setting on the PC and then the, uh, the DNS server will then come back with you with the IP address of example 12 12 12 12 and finally the PC will then send the web request HTTP request to this IP address and reaches the .com server example okay so this is actually how uh, DNS uh, function okay so it can be a server itself that means this if, if this is a DNS server that means uh, this guy actually hosting xxx.com all right so let's say for example you, if you are the client is asking something more than xxx.com for example I want to look for uh, yyy.com okay so this guy will become a, a resolver so on behalf of you <laughs> the DNS server will actually try to look for other server for the uh, yyy.com example or maybe yahoo.com or maybe google.com so then in, in this case that server itself uh, is actually uh, becoming a, a resolver instead of he is the one that hosted the uh, xxx with all the information about IP 